Okay, so here's what we've got going on for the column brace for the G0704. This is 125 wall, 4 inch by 2 inch aluminum extrusion. It's the right width. 24 inch piece is going to be the right length to go from where I've got my stepper mount, but also you have to remember you've got the bolts that secure the column to the base here. So you don't want to block those anyway. So what we're doing, we're going to put some holes in the side with some nuts in the side of here and make another bracket that's going to go on the outside and give a little bit of extra rigidity down here. But I'll have to relocate this box, which is just for all my, uh, or it's a, a connection point for all my limit switches and probe. But uh, let me go ahead and show you what we're doing with the material. Okay, so I made up some uh, two inch by three quarter inch by um, five sixteenths bolt or M eight bolt diameter in the center spacers. So these um, will be drilled in three quarter inch hole one side hole for the bolt on the other side. These will be slipped in bolted in place the whole column after the spacers go in is going to be filled with an epoxy granite mixture what i've decided on it's going to be 80 percent play sand 20 percent uh, fiberglass resin so i don't think the column or the extrusion by itself is going to help with uh, taking out chatter rig uh, rigidity and taking out some of the resonance so filling it is going to make it um, even more rigid, capable of uh, taking away the chatter. But I think just the column itself is going to flex so much less with this bolted in place. So there'll be six bolts. And then in the side, we're going to have nuts put in and epoxied in. And I'll show you how that's going to work. I'll show you the setup in Fusion, and we'll go ahead and machine this out using the mill. So here we have the column spacer modeled up in Fusion. And as you can see, one side we've got the three quarter inch hole. The other side we've got the hole for the eight millimeter M8 or the 5 16 bolt. It'll work with either. And we've got the holes in the side, which are for, um, we'll put a nut on the inside, put a bolt through, wrap the exposed thread on the bolt with tape so then that way when we cast it with the epoxy granite, we can extract the bolt without it being seized in there. And then we'll be able to bolt in side brackets. So, um, you know, just give a quick illustration here. And, oops, here we go. So, spacers modeled up in there. You'll see they'll expose themselves a little on the top. They won't go all the way through. That way there's a solid aluminum spacer transferring the torque of the bolt all the way through, putting really good solid pressure up against this face, which is going to be up against the column. Okay, and then again, we have uh, end caps, which are um, the ones I have are plastic. I was going to make them out of metal, but I did find some plastic ones. And really, all they need to do is um oops i don't know why they're not modeling oh here we go yeah there we go so just a plastic end cap will stick one on one side and then fill the column from top to bottom and it should uh become nice and rigid and then when we're bolting this onto the column itself I'm going to make sure after I drill and tap all the holes that I put an indicator on the column itself just to make sure while I torque this down that the column itself doesn't flex or become distorted. And if that's the case, then we'll have to use some really thin shims and strategic locations just to try to combat that. But I don't think that it's going to be an issue. So we'll go ahead and uh, show the cam really quick. Let me turn off some of these... Uh,
some of these uh, extra parts in here. So the cam setup's really simple. Um, you know, I only have 18 inches of travel along the x-axis, but we're gonna do one op where we do these two holes on the top side, then we're gonna flip it using a stop so I don't have to reset it up. And then we'll do the holes on the bottom side. So set up one, you know, just come in really quick. Bore them out, do a nice 2D contour to give the right hole size. And then that'll actually be a later op. I'm gonna resequence this, but we just get them all done. do the holes on the side same thing use a stop and then I just have to flip it one time so go ahead get this set up in the mill and show you guys machining this up okay so the way I'm doing this I'll only have to zero out this uh, work coordinate system one time for ops one through four and then one more time for ops uh, five and six which are gonna be the holes on the side because we're basing it off of the center of this uh, edge right here and I have a, a bolt in here as a stop basically I just have to flip the part and start up again I don't have to worry about that so I'm just referencing the machine home and we're gonna go ahead and uh, probe for the edge and for the Z height and then we'll start machining this out so got a reference home okay let's uh, break some stuff
I accidentally was doing the previous hop for the larger hole on this side, but I cut it before it became bigger than, or I stopped it before it became bigger than three quarter inch. Um, so it'll still be usable. Just I, uh, I'm glad I, I caught that, but it was a stupid mistake. I should have been paying more attention. Okay, we're going to go ahead and probe this in Probe Wizard. Um, so we'll go ahead and get the Y center first. Oops, actually, that was uh, a little operator error. It errors out if I don't remember to set it back to tool zero which is really good because then I'm going to set up the wrong uh, Z height offset so So I found Y center. Now we're going to find the edge of X. I'm going to do that one more time. I think the ball was actually hitting on the probe was hitting below the stock. So. That'll get a better edge find. Alright, so that's our X and Y. We just got a zero or Z, and again, it'll automatically compensate for the length of the probe, and then I can just uh, start putting in the cutting tool and go from there. So, I'll go ahead and get this switched over. Quick connect with the probe. Pop a quarter inch end mill in.
so I have the two inch long three quarter inch aluminum spacers going through they butt up against the inside of the column and I have a bolt with a washer and a nut to hold the spacers firmly in place and then the four side supports I have nuts on the inside and then the threads are um, covered in heat shrink tubing to protect the threads from when we cast the epoxy granite mixture so I'm just gonna pop on one end plug and then mix up the 80% sand 20% resin mixture fill the column try to shake as much of the air out and then this column brace should be ready to uh, get drilled tapped and installed so we'll do a next video on filling this with the epoxy granite and then the final video will be the insulation and demonstration